Hi everyone and welcome to um, our Pano 2 VR 101 series of webinars. Um, thanks for joining and um, of course we've had a little break um, so all our batteries are recharged and everything else. Um, this is uh, 101 to do with the node images and this will carry on from where we left off a couple of weeks ago. Um, as always I'm Martin and I'm joined today by... Hi I'm Karen, I'll be working in the background here. Um, and. Uh, I'm going to be helping out with the Q&A. So if you have any questions, just uh, add them to the Q&A tab. Martin is showing you right now on the screen. And we'll um, get to those uh, throughout, the, throughout the webinar. Um, we'll do a, a Q&A pause, and then we'll hopefully get to all of the questions also at the end of the webinar. And I just ask that everyone please stay on topic to what we're talking about, which are node images. So um, enjoy your enjoy your webinar and I'll, I'll be back later. Okay, thank you, Karen. Right, okay, so let's go back to Pano 2 VR. This is, I say exactly where we left off, almost where we left off. Um, where we left off last time, we were adding uh, buttons to the skin and things like that. So what I'm gonna do then is open up the skin editor and we should roughly uh, be at the same position okay right now um, right okay so basically um, I'm getting the message here that the screens aren't particularly good quality I don't know why uh, internet connections are pretty good so what I'm going to try and do is slow down a bit um, so uh, you you don't see too much fuzziness when I'm moving the screen around okay so where this differs from where we last left off is I've added a full screen button, okay? And what I've also done is, because um, if you remember uh, last time, what we were doing was when we were adding elements, we were anchoring them in different directions and, and certain ways, so they would pin to the screen um, as you move the screen around. So what I've done here is that when we were building the controller, we put these buttons inside the controller's uh, container and if we have a look at the plus and minus buttons I've anchored those top left now here is the um, the auto rotate buttons now again if you remember um, or if you didn't I'll just do a quick recap with the auto rotate I've actually got two buttons stacked on top of each other so when we start the auto rotate you see the button with the cross through it and when you stop it you see the one that doesn't uh, so we're toggling two different buttons so that's occupying the same space as you can see in this red area. Now, if you look, I've actually anchored these two buttons to the top right, and I've anchored the new full screen button that I've added also to the top right. Now, what I need to do um, just to show you, just to finish off the controller, is that I gave it the action of mouse click, full screen, toggle full screen. So that was the action that I've just added to those. So that completes the controller. Um, but I want to ask, answer the question of, well, why have I actually anchored, if you like, these two buttons one side and these two buttons the other side? Well, it's because I want to squeeze something in the middle later on. It's going to be our node image, which is what this webinar is going to be all about. And the easiest way to do that is to anchor my uh, container to the bottom middle. And as these two buttons are going to be anchored to its top left, and these two buttons are going to be anchored to its top right, if I change the width of this, say to 300, you'll see what happens. It leaves me a nice, nice bit of space to drop something in the middle. So let's just take that back to 160. And you can see that's why, you know, again, thinking forward as you're building the skin. Okay, so that's um, the controller finished off, and that basically uh, finishes that bit. And what we're now going to do is look at uh, the main subject today, which is going to be our node image. So here is the icon for it. This is the tool. When I click this and select it, this is what a node image looks like in the skin. Now, the node image, um, like all of the um, uh, elements, has some standard uh, properties like uh, position, appearance, but when you get to the node image itself, it has its uh, unique properties. So in this case, we've got, um, you know, the uh, format of the image that it's gonna generate. Is it gonna be a ping? Um, we have various options here. I'm gonna choose JPEG, all right? Um, because 
when I'm generating little thumbnail images, um, I don't need them to be very high quality, certainly don't need them um, uh, to be PNGs because it's going to be a square, I don't need any transparency. And also the same uh, with the same thing with the quality, I'm going to drop that down to about 70. Because they're small images, um, like little thumbnails, they don't need to be high quality. And of course, if I lower the quality, I lower the file size, the overall file size. Not so much important with this um, particular project um, because I've only got four nodes. Um, but if you've got a big project with lots of uh, input panoramas, which again, I'm referring to as nodes. Um, if you have a menu system, like a thumbnail menu system with lots of little node images, then all of those little images start to build up in file size and make the overall project quite large okay so going back to my node image then um, now I can select which tour node it's going to represent so I'm going to select the courtyard and as soon as I do that we see my courtyard image all right okay now what I want to construct here is a button that is going to change the view of the courtyard from its normal what we call rectilinear view into the little planet so a stereographic view all right so that's what i want it to do so what i want is this to um, uh, picture the view it's going to be so what i can do he says is i'm going to um oh let's take that back to 70 because i just changed that um if we make the image 200 by 200 now it's not going to be this size i'm only doing this so i can see what i'm going uh, doing and it's obviously going to help you guys see the screen as well um, I'm going to change the view so it looks like a little planet so how I'm going to do that is the tour node is going to be courtyard I'm going to change the projection to stereographic and now I can start I can deselect use default view and I can start to make my little planet view so I'm going to look down to start with so I'm going to drop the tilt to minus 90 then I'm going to start to zoom out there we go you can start to see that's forming and then I need to change the pan angle because I want to change that around and get it on the top oh that's too far I can actually on my mouse I'm going to use my scroll wheel to move that around Hang on. so it's roughly where I want it okay I can zoom out a little bit more and the other thing is as well as you can see that I've got the the two parts of the towers if you like sticking out the top if you change the tilt you can see that you can play around with it okay it makes the bottom look a bit bigger but then you've got the tilt okay um, probably can bring in zoom a bit more make that a little bit better now that I've got the view I want I'm actually going to want the panorama to be like this as well so what I'm going to do because I'm lazy is I'm actually going to take a screen print of these settings okay so on the Mac I can just um, hold down a few keys and take a picture there or you could write them down whichever way but I want these settings I want to use them later okay so now that's done and that's my thumbnail what I want to do now is make it the right size for my project so it's going to be basically 50 by um, 50 pixels there we go so that's that's now my button to make my stereographic projection okay so um, let's do that then so what I want to do now, or what I have to do now, is obviously give it the actions to do what I want, i.e. to change the view. So I'm going to double click in the actions, and I'm also going to double click and open up the screenshot that I've got. Okay, and let's just move the skin out of the way for the second. So the action is going to be mouse click, and I'm going to use view. Now we do have an action where we can change the projection, but I don't want to use that and, I, and, and, and it will become apparent as we go through. So I'm gonna change the view and I'm going to move to a view, all right? Now look at what settings I've got to play with. Um, I'm going to move to a view and I can now set the pan tilt field of view. So basically um, 182, what's that, 0.3. Um, What's the tilt? Minus 74.3, so minus 74.3. Um, I don't have roll, I'm gonna use the 255 for my zoom field of view. It's asking the speed 
I'm actually going to say two, so two times the speed. And the projection, I'm not going to keep it, I want to change it to stereographic. And I've got these easing functions. Ease out, so it starts off slowly then speeds up. Ease out in is it starts off slowly, um, speeds up and then slows down as it eases out. And then the last one, ease out back, which is the one I'm going to use. And that gives you like a rubber band effect. So it eases out, goes past its uh, stopping point and then brings and springs back a little bit. OK, so that's the action I've given this node image. Now, I'm going to be using the node image like a button. So what I also want to do is if we go down to appearance, we have this selection box for hand cursor. And if I select that, what that's going to do. So let's just see this is as I hover over, the cursor is going to change into a hand. There we go. And when I click this now, we get that same projection as the button. And you see that rubber band effect. So that's that's doing exactly what I want it to do. Right. Um, what I also am going to do here is I'm going to add a rectangle tool or, or, or use a rectangle. And I want this to be the background for this. So what I'm going to do is set its size. So I'm going to change, uh, set the same size, so 50 by 50 pixels. All right. Um, but this time round, I'm going to um, set the border width to three. So I've got a little bit thicker border. Now, what I'm going to do here is set the, um, just change the ID for the node image because um, it's always a good idea to, you know, have good IDs so you, so you don't get confused and you know what's going on and it it, it, it helps in the future uh, or, or, or it helps when you want to you know try and diagnose things and find elements within the skin so I'm gonna call this button um, uh, stereo and I'm gonna call the rectangle button projection OK, and what I'm going to do now is drag the node image into the rectangle. Now, again, if you remember what we're talking about anchoring, if I now select the um, node image anchor point to the center, what I can do is set 0, 0, and it will be now nicely in the middle. If I have a look at the skin preview, here we've got the live preview, you can see there it is. All right, so that's the black surround or the border I've given it. Okay, now because it's gonna be a button, like all my other buttons, when I hover over them, we get this green outline. And I want to do the same with this button um, that I'm creating. So if we select the rectangle, and I'm going to select the uh, border uh, color and I'm going to say that on mouse over when that's true change the color now what I'm going to do is I want to sample this color now I've tested this it does work on the PC as well as the Mac so if we click it and click and hold I can now move the cursor over and sample the same color green all right so let's get it a little bit darker that's it I can let go there's my color green now what I'm also going to do is drag that into my custom colors. So what this allows me to do is if I was to color something different, so if I have another element that I want to change the color of later, I will have this exact same color available for me. All right, so I'm going to click OK and click OK here. So let's go back to the preview and that's what should now happen. So that's going to sort of work very well with these here as well. OK, now I haven't positioned it in the buttons yet. That will wait till later. But that obviously is the button to change its projection to the little planet. What I want to do now is add another node image to show you what it's going to look as, as the return button. So again, select the node image, change its size quickly to 50 by 50. There we go. This time around, I'm going to call it um, oh, uh, button uh, recti, as in rectilinear. Um, so it's its normal view. Again, I'm going to change the format of the button to a JPEG and bring down the quality because I don't really need massive quality at this point. And we also need it to be showing for node uh, the courtyard. There we go. So that's 
that's that button and its action very very similar is going to be mouse click and we're still going to be using the view but this time round I'm going to be selecting move to default view and again the speed I'll have is at 2 and again I'm going to select the ease out back okay the linear one that you saw there it just basically means it starts and finishes with no effect so it doesn't speed up and slow down it's just a, a linear um, movement okay so that's there uh, let's close save and see what goes on I know I haven't positioned anything yet so we now have this button to give me my little planet projection and this one will bring it back spot the deliberate mistake it's got no hand symbol so we need to go back and correct that so again if we select the node image give it the hand cursor and now I need to position it so I'm going to drag that and drop it onto my button projection Again, I'm going to set the anchor point so it's in the center, which then makes it really easy for lining up because I just need it to be zero by zero pixels for X and Y. Okay, all right, so that's my button and it's 50 odd pixels wide. So as I said before, with the container, because I anchored my other buttons top left and top right, to squeeze this in, all I need to do now is make my container a bit bigger. So let's just you know, call it, um, what is it 160 so uh, 220 all right I can now collapse the um, tree on the button so I've only got one element to play with and I'm going to drag that in between these two not forgetting that these two buttons are stacked on top that's why we've got three at the top and two at the bottom so in actual fact visually we're only seeing two either side okay so all I need to do now again is anchor that to the bottom so the XY, if I now put that to zero, that should be perfectly in the middle. And when I drop that down to zero, that should be perfectly aligned there. Okay, so let's close, save, and let's have a look at what we got. So there's my controller. Um, we've got the zoom in and out, the auto rotate, the full screen. Um, and when I click my button now, oh dear, what's going on? It's because it's got the wrong button showing it's not showing my little planet okay so what we're going to do is use logic blocks for this okay so this is the one I want to show now this is actually quite a good opportunity to show you this now at the moment we're seeing the the button that takes you back to the rectilinear or the normal projection all right but if I was to swap that over you'll see that it's now showing the correct button so just as a recap really the skins tree the the uppermost element is the one that's more forward to you so in this case if you wanted this to be obviously visually uh, 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 showing you put it above the, uh, above the other one but this really doesn't matter um, how I do this because when I add the logic blocks it will sort it out and you will see the correct button at the correct time so what I'm going to do is on the um, projection change button I'm going to I'm actually going to use the alpha logic block I want it to fade in and out I could do the same thing on visibility but visibility is a you know hide and show only but with the alpha I can fade things in and out so it gives me a better effect I think but again it's entirely up to you guys but the logic block I'm going to use so here's our little logic block button it's the arrows going up or down so one or zero or if you like or if you don't like and I'm going to double click and the trigger I'm going to uh, use is going to be view and projection and I'm going to say when it's in the stereographic projection I want its alpha to be zero so I want it to, to disappear but I'm going to get it to transition over I'm going to say two seconds all right because of the transition from uh, the normal view to the little planet view takes a few seconds there's no point changing the button straight away so I might as well get that to to fade slowly as well so just to recap on this when I click this button we are changing the view to stereographic all right the logic block is saying that when the pro, uh, projection equals stereographic fade this button out over two seconds cool all right so I'm gonna do roughly the same thing with the normal button but this time round, I'm going to start the alpha at zero. He says, let's highlight that 
<coughs> put that to zero and we are now going to use a very similar logic block so view projection and when that equals stereographic I want that to fade in so alpha 1 so it's a solid and we're going to fade it in over I don't know I can't remember what we said now two or three seconds to say two seconds whatever and that's what it should do so let's close and save and we can see the right button and when I click it we change into a stereographic group and as soon as it does that the logic block changes the view that we've got and when we click it to come back it changes back again so there we go so rather than um, you know in the good old days what we would have done is had a, a few actions saying on mouse click hide self show this button on that button it's that now is completely replaced with our logic blocks the logic block is detecting the projection change and we're now hiding and showing on the projection now this has a little issue and the issue is I only want this to happen on the first node because it looks cool okay if I change nodes so we're now into the second node and click the button there's nothing stopping it still doing this stereographic projection but of course we only set it up to give us a good view of the first node so theoretically I don't want this button working at all other than for node 1 so how do I do that right well that is actually quite straightforward um, it's like everything once you know it's it's not bad right so how are we going to do that right well I'm going to introduce you to what we call action filters and I only really need to do it to the first button that's going to change the stereographic projection all right so what I need to happen is to stop this from changing uh, projection on any other nodes apart from node 1 how I'm going to do that is I'm going to select the user data okay and I'm going to give this node a custom node ID and this is going to be unique to the courtyard I'm going to call it courtyard that's how unique it is it's that name right so copy it okay so what I'm going to do is go back to the skin all right and we're now going to go to that action I'm going to double click it and like we had logic blocks we've got a very similar button here and this is our action filter so I'm going to select that and I'm going to say that only work when the uh, let's have a look let's have a look placeholders user data uh, custom node oh sorry hang on uh, I've dropped that um, user data it's right at the bottom of the screen I do apologize custom node ID equals the courtyard there you go so that is that is the condition so only execute this action when the custom node ID of that node is courtyard all right so let's say okay to that okay to that close save export this if I go to node 2 and click the button nothing will happen same if I go to node 3 nothing will happen let's come back out to the courtyard and when I click the button we get the projection change so that's introducing um, the uh, action filter so we can stop actions happening but only at certain times and that's a great little gap there to ask Karen do we have any questions Karen hello no okay I'll carry you, on then. oh you don't hear me or you do hear me I do hear you now I didn't before <laughs> oh okay um yeah so I, we don't have any questions uh, the problem may be that uh, it's what you are saying is very clear and everyone's getting it or it could be that we really don't see much of what you're doing because of the poor quality so really sorry about that everyone right yeah don't understand that but however be assured that I'm actually recording this in full uh, 4k quality off my uh, monitor like we do with all of them they're being recorded live so if you're not really catching it then you know 
when you view it uh, later on when we've processed the video it should be super sharp and good to go anyway so this is um i'll carry i'll take it that's that's that karen i'll, I'll carry on yeah yep you carry on right i'll, mm -hmm. I'll carry on boss says so right okay so here we go then we've got the buttons as i say we've got the nice effect that when we hover over we get the green button and we've got all of our projection changes right so that's um the node image being used to uh, work with specific nodes okay so let's go back to the skin because uh, something else we can do is use the node image on the hotspot okay so if i select the hotspot now Another little thing I want to show you is if you look at the hotspot we made, we gave it some white text. Now that's really difficult to see in the skin canvas. So what you can do is change view, background color, and I can change it to black or gray. I'll change it to gray. And then you can see that um, text is a little bit easier. So again, if you're dealing with graphics on the skin canvas and it's difficult to see, be aware you can actually change the views. All right, so yeah, you've got those or you can use a custom color wherever right okay so I'm going to select the hotspot I'm going to move it to the center of the screen another little trick I want to show you well it's not a trick but something that we've put in is that I've now finished with my controller I don't want it but I can still click on it accidentally and pull things around so I have a couple of options I can either hide it from view just by unclicking the eye and I no longer can interact with it or if I still wanted to see it I can right button click and lock it in the canvas and I cannot interact with it at all once it's locked all right so that's that's another way so I'm just going to leave it locked for the minute because it's a, a section of the skin that I'm happy with I'm finished and it's done lock it away can't destroy it or accidentally break it later right okay so that's the node image but as I say being used for a specific node what I want to do now is select the node image again and I'm going to make it a um, uh, 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 good size. So let's do 100 by, I don't know, 70. That might be a good size. And what I'm going to use it for is my preview image for the hotspots or, or, or for the node. So when I hover over the hotspot, it's going to pop up to show me the preview image of the next node. All right. So what I'm going to do, again, as always, we'll call this um, uh, HT... Uh, preview uh, image okay and I'm gonna do what I did last time because I do like to see a border around these if you just have an image um, uh, it, it, it sometimes it can be difficult to see there's no separation between image and the panorama so again what I'm going to do is select the rectangle and again the same size so it's gonna be 100 by uh, 70 um, I'm gonna drop in the preview image um, inside the rectangle so it's a child element of the rectangle again I'm going to select the anchoring set the X and Y to 0 0 that is the fastest way to line something up and the rectangle I'm going to just call that HT um, preview because it's not the image so it's preview and again what we're going to do with the preview image or actually no with the rectangle is um, I'm going to set the border width and I'm going to set the border color because obviously this is going to be hidden until we hover over it. And I want to set the border color to the same green. All right. Now, the good news is we set that green in the custom colors. So it's there again for me to use. There we go. So job done. All right. OK, so that's the reason why I did it, because I knew I wanted to use other things of the same colors. OK, so that's my preview image. Um, and what I'm going to do is drop that onto the node image and open that up so here it is and again what I'm going to do is use the anchoring to line it up because it's far the simplest way so that's the you know the the Y position and the X um, if I do zero that's obviously too much if I do I don't know let's do 50 um, that's too much as well so let's just bring that oh let's bring that down a bit um, let's go to about there so that's 25 that'll do right now we've obviously got our text we had before all right um, now again I don't know if you can remember or not but how we had this set up is that the text was hidden and on mouse over um, the parent on the visible logic block it showed 
But in this case, we don't want this because it's going to be a part of our node image. I want the text to appear on the node image. So I'm going to expand the node image and I'm going to drag the text box and make it a child of the node image. So you can see it there now. And again, I'm going to anchor it at the bottom and just set zero, zero. All right, so that's that. It's anchored there. But what I do need it to be is visible because I'm no longer hiding and showing the text on its own. And I just want to get rid of the logic block that did that. OK, so that text is now visible all the time. Now, if I close and save this, you can see that there it is. Now, you can see why I wanted to put a border around it, because against the um, background, it's it would be hard to see. All right. Um, so that's that. Now, what we've also got to do, obviously, it's visible all the time, but I don't want it to be visible all the time. I only want it to be visible when we hover over the point hotspot. So what I'm going to do is select the uh, preview image, deselect its visible, and add the logic that was, say, when we mouse over the parent, i.e. the hotspot, okay, when that's true, I want to see the, the preview image. Okay, so that should now give me that effect. There you go. Now I can go back in here and tidy up a little bit more. Um, so let's spin that around. You can see all that going on. The text itself is, is white. It's not very clear. I could change the color of the text. So let's do that. I um, Well, in actual fact, what we could do with the text is the background color. If I enable the background and change that to the green, and then I can set the text itself is, is white already. So that's that's cool. Um, now, the reason why I'm closing the skin and producing an output every time and not just previewing this um, is when you're looking at hotspots, hotspots do not show in the preview. You've only got um, solid or, 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 or you, you've only got skin elements uh, that can be seen. Hotspots are a special element. They can't be seen because theoretically there is no hotspot in the live preview. OK, so this is why I'm having to close, save and have a look at this every time. But of course, with the speed of Pano 2 VR, that's not an issue. So as you can see there, what I've got there is the text is now white, um, but the border is not going side to side. OK, so why is that? And that is because the text box even though it's set, um, let's have a look, set at the same width, 100 pixels, it was actually set for auto sizing. So it, it actually ch changed its width depending on the amount of text within the box. Because I now want it to be permanently uh, the same size, I'm going to deselect the auto size. And the only reason why we're having to do this is because we're using an old text element from the previous project. Um, if you'd added a new text element, then this wouldn't be selected. So we're actually backtracking and fixing some issues that we actually created when we first built the project. But there you go. So that should now, there we go. We've got nice, uh, if I leave the mouse still for a little while, the asset, the, the highlighter should disappear. So we've now got the entrance. Okay, so the thing to note, all right, is if you look at the preview image, it's changing. I'm getting a different preview image. Now, what is going on? Because last time round, I had to select a preview image and I had to show what I wanted it to show. I had to select what I wanted it to show. This is this is where it all gets clever. Because a hotspot um, is is it, what it's doing, what the what the node image is doing is it's picking up that it needs to show the next node. All right. So the what you have to make sure of then is if you want this to do what it's got to do, so first of all, what we should have done was set it to JPEG and our 70%, all right, um, is you leave the node image blank, all right? If I select a node image, then it will be that same node image throughout the whole of the project. But if I leave it blank, Pano 2 VR knows that, hello, this is, it's, it's on a hotspot, so therefore all hotspots are going to be showing different things, therefore, I know which image I need to grab and drag and and make this um, preview, as it were. So that's how that works. So it's quite clever. Um, it saves you an awful lot of time. All you've got to do is put the preview image. But as long as it's on top of a hotspot template, this thing, 
um, then it will automatically select the images for you. All right, so that's that's our hotspots. Right, I'm going to change the uh, view back before I forget because I do like my white background. And again, that's now my hotspot done. So I'm going to select the hotspot and move it to one side. And I'm going to lock that in my canvas. All right, so let's just lock that because I've now finished with my hotspot. I've got my controller done, got my hotspot done. I don't need to interact with them anymore. Lock them. Okay, cool. Before I move on, I'll do another quick shout out. Any, any questions yet? Anything or not? Or can I move on? No, there's a lot of questions. Oh. <laughs> Damn, I thought I was going to get an easy ride today. <laughs> Go on then. All right, so I'll start from the from the top. Um, <clears throat> uh, so uh, Mikhail is asking, can you make a round button? I can. Um, with the node image, right, okay, with the node image at the moment, you have to put a little bit of CSS in there. So it can be done, but it's not nice. Um, with the other elements like rectangles and things like that, if I just draw a rectangle, we have a radius setting. So if I was to put the, the radius of 999 pixels from the center, it will turn into a circle. However, in the next major update, I, I, I know that there is a feature request for such things for node images um, to be able to go into a circle. But for the moment, what you would do is go onto the internet, type in CSS radius. It will give you um, a, a little bit of short code and you would stick that into. So if I select the node image, you'll see here that we've got the CSS inner element and you'd shove in that, shove in, sorry. That's, it's very Essex of me. Um, you would you would insert the correct code into this here, and you would then be able to change the radius using CSS. Hopefully, um, Thomas Bloodingfield might show you how to do that in the next webinar. To be honest, but yeah, yes, yeah, that's right. um, but that's where you would do it. You would you would you would put it in there. So using CSS, yes, you can do. It. You can even put in CSS filters, so you could actually make it grayscale or sepia or whatever you wanted to do. So CSS is quite powerful. So there's a plug for Thomas. You know, um, shiny fo and, and shiny and foldy bits of paper will be greatly uh, received. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> and uh, but yeah, but yes, you you can do that. Um, the only reason why I'm leaving that as as a square is because this is the 101. Trying to keep it basic. Don't want to dive into anything that's you know a little bit deeper. Once all of this stuff is is second nature to everyone, then yeah, we dip into CSS and we can add some things. But as I say, hopefully in the next major release, um, these elements will have radius anyway so you probably won't need it um so yeah all good so yes we can have round buttons cool thanks all right on to the next question um from guest 972 um is asking is it possible to make the that view button easily disappear when it's not um yeah when it's not being used Indeed. I'm glad someone asked that. <laughs> right. Okay. And how we would do that is um, I can go to, well, I could go to the visible logic. I'm going to go to the alpha logic block and I am going to say, right, that we're going to alpha it out to zero, right? And I'm going to go to the alpha logic block and turn in and say that when the uh, hotspot uh, user data custom when the custom node is what will I say it was called courtyard C O U R T Y A R D. I am probably going to spell this wrong, but so courtyard we can alpha that back over. Let's do a, a one second period. Right, okay. So this is the logic to it, right? It's going to be alpha zero, so it's going to be hidden to start with, but it's going to say that when the custom node ID equals court, courtyard, 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 make it alpha one. Yeah. Okay, so we publish this. You can see the button, but when we go to the next node, boom! Goes away. It goes Magic. away. So that's it, and it's back again. So not only can we use a... Well, yeah, and the other thing is as well, is if you really, 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 really wanted to go for it, um, should I do it? Should I? I don't know. Let's go for it. Um, what we can say <laughs> is that... When the, uh, what are we doing, placeholder, um, user data, Dubri, um, C O U R T courtyard. So when it 
doesn't, aha, when it doesn't equal courtyard, right, make it 160, right? Okay. Now, I don't know if this will work because I've not done this because obviously I didn't anticipate the question. But theoretically, <laughs> when I change location, the buttons also squidge up as well now. <laughs> cool. All right. So not only does the button disappear in the middle, but the other buttons squidge up. And when we go back to the other one, there we go there. And <laughs> what I could do is because um, I'm using a, uh, a logic block that has movement, we could also put in the transition. Um, so well, I've got a second there. So let's... So instead of it snapping, you know, two buttons and, and or rather five buttons, four buttons, it will now move around. There you go. It's probably not the best, but yeah, there you go. So you've got that sort of thing going on as well. But in answer to the question, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, uh, guess 972 says perfect, even, even easier than how they were doing it before. So thanks for that. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Yeah. A little bit of magic in there. Um, so let's see. Luke is asking. <clears throat> Luke's got a few questions here. <laughs> is it possible to move the con the control uh, the controller can container out of the picture um, with a timeout without any action to uh, and move it back in on a mouse move? Okay, so you want to. You want to hide the con the controller, <clears throat> and when you move, uh, and then when you move back in, you have uh, you bring it back in. I think is that that's. Uh, if that's the <laughs> case, then it is going slightly off topic. But okay, um, you were, we 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 could. Um, if I look at the time, if I added a timer, uh, what we could say is player inactive. All right, give it a timeout and give it the action to move this out, right? Mm -hmm. So player and active. As soon as you start clicking in this, the player's active, and then you could have the the action to bring it back in again. So in answer to the question, yes, but you would use the timer to do that. So you would add a timer, and then you would use the player in active type. So you'd have a timeout, say five seconds. So the, I'm assuming the idea is that you've got a nice panorama when you stop interacting with it you want to see things disappear you could actually have this um uh, activate i know it sounds a little bit advanced but you could actually act to activate um, a variable that could hide everything on the screen so you just see the panorama until you start to interact with it again and everything then comes back but as i say that's for another time that's a bit too advanced for a 101 but as you yeah. can see possible yeah sorry about that i was no no, no absolutely fine. um and the other question that Luke has, and I'm really sorry, Luke, I, I, I missed where I missed what um, Martin was doing while you asked this. And so he's asking, um, you know, you're sliding in and out. You're, so you're only a linear, linear speed. I'm not uh, I'm not sure what you mean by sliding in and out. All right. Okay. Well, what, what, what I meant by um, as probably my UK Essex um dialect sorry but basically uh what i was saying is when we were changing projections okay we had this easing function now what you see happen is when we click this button it start it eases in it slows down it starts to slow down as we get to the little planet view but it goes past it and then comes back again that give me a rubber band effect all right so the ease out will start so as it as it changes from lecture to rectilinear to, uh, to to stereographic or from normal normal view to little planet it starts off um slowly and then uh and and gets quicker so it eases out and starts off gets quicker um this one is in out does exactly the same thing so it starts off slowly gets quicker and as it gets to the little planet view it starts to slow down and, and gradually stops and that's what you see so that's what i meant so on the linear one there is no easing it just starts and finishes. There is no speeding up or slowing down. So it's not uh, so so so. When I word use the word slide, I actually meant as you zoom into it. So as you, I don't know, zoom into the little planet view, change projection to the little planet view, slide into the little planet view. It was just a terminology I used, but basically it's the easing function. 
I hope that answered that one. I hope so too. <laughs> Great, okay. thank you. And let's see, Mark, Marcus uh, just wrote in another uh, um, another question, which is off topic, uh, <laughs> but I guess we should ask it. <laughs> Damn. Uh, well, yeah, but maybe maybe it works. Uh, uh, oh. um, will all these settings work the same way in the next major release? And, yeah, nothing should yeah. be really changing. Um, on major releases, uh, we tend to add more things and make things easy. Um, but we do pride ourselves that, you know, even in version six, if you open up a version five skin, the majority of the things should work, um, if not all. Um, I'm, you know, if I was to talk to Thomas and Christoph, they should, they would say, well, everything should work. Um, it's just if you open up a new skin with an old build, obviously there'd be stuff in there that the old skin can't handle and it won't work so but we should always be backwards compatible i can't say we're going to be backwards compatible to say version two or version three um because technology has changed but certainly if you're in version six and you've been building skins and then whenever we do this because there is no set dates because we're still working on version six as and when the next major release does come through um you know the idea is that your version six skin should work. But what will probably happen is Pano 2 VR will say, this was built with an older version of Pano 2 VR. We're going to update it to version seven. Are you okay with this? And when you click yes and you open up in version seven, then it then you're probably gonna get problems, or you may not, I don't know, um, opening up with the older version because you've now changing that to a, a much newer version because you may then start to use logic blocks or whatever that's in seven that's not in six so yeah right yeah okay so i just want to um simon g has a question which i just want to quickly address um <clears throat> and he's asking if you can have different uh, different images for different hotspots. And although this has nothing to do with what we're talking about today, the answer is yes. And you would use a hotspot template. And um, we've had a webinar on this, I think. We're, and if not, there's documentation um, explaining exactly that. Well, we've just done it here. This is what Oh, we just did it here. Yes, yeah, so you just make another one. That's, that's, and, that's it. That's exactly yeah. what it's done. Um, but if you leave it blank, you see, if it's on a hotspot template, the hotspot template will tell the node image which node image to use for which hotspot you're at, you see. So that's why it changes all the time. So this is why you do not specify which node that is going to show. Because if you do, then it will be the same one throughout. Uh, yeah, I think he was talking about the actual um, hotspot image. So because he, he's asking in some types of uh, in some panels, he wants a red dot, and some in some others you oh, want a blue sorry. dot. Oh, sorry, right? right. Okay. So you want just um, want to use different. It was my fault for not clarifying that. No, 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 no. Um, it's, but, it's all right. I've I've got it right. Hotspot image. Yes, you can. You can, as we did with. Um, if you remember, we we went to the custom node ID and we put courtyard in there. All right. If you do that with. All the different panoramas if we open up the um uh i've actually oh simon is, is saying he's talking about the black dot yeah the yep. black so, dot in the example yeah. right so yeah let's, okay. let's unlock this in the canvas basically the black dot is that one right so here's the black dot and what we could say here is here's the black dot color and i could quite easily say here that um if the placeholder for the user data or a tag you can use tags on this we can use <laughs> notes or tags but basically if you use the uh, custom node id or a tag if that equals the value that you want then you can change its color here so it could be ad hoc so every node could have a different tag and so you could say uh, if the tag equals, you know, I don't know, node two, change it to blue. If it and if it equals node four, change it to green. So yeah, you can change that. That's one of the the the, the great things about using a, um, a a rectangle to make elements in the skin because they're totable, you know, totally controllable. You can change, you know, using these logic blocks, you can change the size of it, the shape of it, the 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 the, the the color of it you know if you add like a png graphic or an svg we you know with svgs we can use our color tool to change color but you can't do it on the fly all right but with elements such as rectangles you can use these logic blocks and as you can see we can change the colors so in answer to your question yes yeah we can <laughs> <laughs> okay i think uh, that's it. Uh, okay, but Luke was as also asking, going back to Luke's question, I think, with uh, moving um, 
uh, or easing what we were talking about before um, for if you're moving the animation of oh where did it go uh, for moving an animation a component uh, how do you do this path I think it's asking how are you getting this animation in did we, did you go over that no basically um, what 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 I did was just um, set the view I want to see and the, and the view that I want to see when it's finishing yeah so uh, so when we go from normal view to little planet view pano 2 vr fills in the gaps i just tell it where to start from and where to end pano 2 vr fills in the gaps that's what's happening with this if you wanted um to do more of a um i don't know detailed one um now i, I take it you're talking about flyings you you could actually i suppose use an animation you could actually go into the animation editor and create a specific um path so you could for argument's sake you know um look down zoom out spin around then go to the little planet view and you could make that path in the animation editor but that is way too advanced for a 101 series and i really do not want to go there <laughs> but, <laughs> but it can be done <laughs> it can be done all right cool. but things like this this all we're doing is moving to view so in this instance because I'm just moving it to a view, I'm just moving from point A to point B and Pano 2BR is filling in the spaces. So yeah, all right, so that's that one. Right. Cool, I think that that's it for the questions. Um, yeah, right, okay. uh, I'm coming yeah. in. Right, what else can we do? Right, okay, I'm gonna quickly, I was, I was sort of looking at my time, but I I'll, I'll do want to cover this and I'll do it and I'll do it quickly. Um, and that's because it still includes a node image. And that is, I'm going to build very, very quickly um, a thumbnail menu. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to add a node image because that's the heart of any thumbnail menu system is the thumbnails. All right. So this is going to call this um, uh, thumbnail menu image. All right. So that's what I'm going to call this going to give it a, a, a decent size. So let's um, make it, now here's a tip, right? Big tip coming up. Every time you make a node image, which is obviously generating thumbnail images, all right? Because um, that's what it's showing. If you can keep your node image the same size, so if you had the same size node image for the hotspots and the same size image for say a thumbnail menu that we're gonna look at now, then Pano 2 VR only has to produce one set of images which you upload to your server, okay? Um, if you have like here, I've got one at 50 pixels and this one at 100 wide and this one could be, then basically Pano 2 VR has to generate three lots of the same images because they are different shapes and sizes, all right? The way to get around things like this, in our um, skins that come with Pano 2 VR, um, all of the thumbnail images are the same size, but you'll but 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 you'd say, Martin, no, they're not, because my thumbnail images in the thumbnail menu are smaller. That's because I've applied scaling to them, so they're still a hundred by seventy odd pixels big throughout the whole of the tour. But where I wanted the thumbnail slightly smaller, I've scaled them smaller in the skin. All right, so. So basically, Pano 2 VR only has to make one set of images. So that's that's a little tip there. So if you're going to start using lots of thumbnail images or these uh, node images, try and keep them all the same size to make your tour a little bit more streamlined and, and, and file size not so hungry. OK, so what I'm going to do then, as I say, we're going to set this to 100 uh, by uh, 70. Um, I'm going to keep it big so it's nice and easy to see. And what we're going to do is introduce this kitty here and this is our um, draw cloner it's our draw cloner tool so it's our cloner here it is and I'm gonna make this the same size so it's a hundred by 70 I'm going to position that um, let's do that say 10 pixels from the top 10 pixels uh, so it's anchored in the corner and I'm going to say this is going to be the I don't know um, let's just call that menu cloner and I'm going to make our image a child of this okay and then I'm going to again do as I normally do anchor in the center set the x and y to zero which will uh, which will then align it up okay if I preview this this is what's going to happen boom it's going to make an image for each of our nodes 
automatically. So this is what the cloner is doing. The cloner is taking a blank node image and saying, well, because I'm a cloner, I'm going to clone this image for every single node of the tour. So if you've got a, I don't know, three or 400 node tour, just do this simple task and you've now got a thumbnail for every single node that you've got. Now, if you want this to change nodes, what you have to do is select the node image itself and give it an action. And the action will be mouse click, open next panorama. And we're going to use the, what well, we're going to use that hotspot URL and we're going to leave the view to a default view. All right. That is the action for it. And because I'm going to be clicking it, I want to show interaction. So I'm going to use the hand cursor. So when we hover over it, the cursor changes to a hand to show, intera inter to show interaction. The other thing I'm going to do is like we did with all the other thumbnail images, set it to JPEG and bring down the quality to 70. Again, don't need high quality, it's only a thumbnail. Okay, now if we preview this, you can now see that the hand changes and when I click, you you see it says node one, that's now node four or whatever and node three. Um, so yeah, you can see that we're changing nodes, it is working, it's pretty much all bunched up. Um, so what I would like to do is to give it a little bit more room. Now, also, it's also going horizontally, but I want this to go vertically. So if I select the cloner, we can change the clone direction to vertical. All right, so we've now done that, and this is what it looks like. Boom. And we can even reverse its direction or invert the uh, direction if you wanted. But as I said, all these nodes are really, really bunched up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, some uh, height to the um that's it to the cloner and that gives me a little bit of a gap before the next image and there we go and there he is okay so this is basically if i was to actually let's get rid of this and let's actually see what this looks like live so now we've got our menu and it works and again just using the node image so node image into cloner give it an action boom done now the other little um, uh, tool we've got here is uh, draw scroller. Um, again, what I could do, I can draw that so big. And what the scroll area does is if you've got loads of thumbnail images, if you've got, I don't know, a 200 node tour, obviously they're going to go off the edge of the screen and it's going to be long. So what a clone, uh, so what a scroll area does is allows you to make it scrollable. There you go, like that. So that was painless. And the other thing is, is that everything we build is interactive with other elements. So we're starting off with node one. If I go to node two, we go to node two. If I go to node three, watch the scroller. Boom. It will move with it. There you go. And again, same thing coming back. So it's react. So it's responsive to the node that you're at. Okay. And of course you can do whatever you want there. All right, so that's um, basically um, using the node image with a cloner within the scroll area. Um, we will probably have, or well, say probably most definitely have um, a webinar on the cloner because you can make some pretty advanced menus with this. Um, this is not a 101 series uh, 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 subject. Um, once you're used to building these and it becomes second nature, then we can step it up a bit. Obviously, in the uh, uh, components toolbox, you will see um, we have components, which is our, you know, um, uh, menu, a thumbnail menu with categories, all of that sort of thing. You can start to see that we've got menus and cloners and 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 cloners within cloners, so they're nest, so they're nested, and it isn't too difficult, but not something I want to cover right now. And I do believe that's my hour as well. So, you know, back to Karen for the last and final time. Do we have any questions? Currently, we don't. Um, if anyone has a question for Martin, type now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I think nothing is showing up. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, um, as I say, we're up to the hour. Um, I'm sure everyone's got better things to do. I'm starting to get a square bum, so I need to move. And so what I'm going to do is wrap this up, I think. Um, oh, uh, wait, uh, oh, hold on. Uh, damn, go on. Oh, okay, no, okay, no, that was just, I thought someone had a, had a, uh, um, had a question. Oh, maybe somebody does. Oh, okay. 
Good. Okay. Everyone's saying thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> no worries. All good. All good. All righty. Well, as I say, I think that's the um, the, the thumbnail uh, uh, or the uh, node image done. You can see what it's, it's, it's about and what it does. And yeah, as always, guys, thanks for watching from me. Thanks. Bye. Bye.